So uh, before I proceed, I should thank the, the ISTRACTI for organizing the session and uh, of course, CARDA for giving me permission to use some of the, the slides and also BSI and finally my university for allowing me to do these uh, uh, external activities which, uh, which feed into these sessions like this. So anyway, so let's start uh, with the presentation. So this is about um, a, a standards update. This is about the, the second generation of Eurocode 5. So um, I'm, I'm sure most of you have heard about the, 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 the standards being updated uh, at, at regular intervals and so on. But this is, uh, this is a first for us. This is the first time that we are editing or we are updating a Eurocode. Of course, we have done amendments before that this is the first time that we will be doing um, a real update or real real second generation. And the, the things that we will be looking at uh, this evening then are the, the reasons for the second generation of Eurocodes. So I should clarify why I said Eurocodes because this is not just about Eurocode 5. We are updating the, the whole suite of Eurocodes in the process. We are just a tiny part of this process. And in fact, uh, my contribution to the whole process is even tinier. But um, when you look at the, the, the slide now, you, you'll see that the, the second generation of Eurocodes are uh, due to periodic reviews as well as to capture the, the, the feedback from, from the users, just that's, uh, that's you and me in this, in this world. So uh, this is also an opportunity for all the Eurocodes to uh, catch up with the state of the art because the, the industry is, is very good at pushing the boundaries. And, and when you push the boundaries, you may come across certain questions, certain problems. And then uh, some of you may ask the question from places like the ISTRACTI or the BSI. And then the, there are committees, we call them the national mirror committees. And these mirror committees will then uh, try to address these questions. And if they can't find an answer, they will then collect all this information and we'll send them up to the, the SEN groups or the, the European standardization groups. So there they will not um, try to answer them immediately, but they will wait for uh, another opportunity to, to go to the uh, particular working group, working group for that particular subject. For example, in the connections subject, there is a working group five at SEN level. Uh, to look after the connections queries coming through. And, and I'm part of that, that group and we will look at them jointly and we will then decide whether to uh, give an answer then and there, or uh, if we decide that is something that we need to be addressing uh, at a later stage, at a, uh, a later amendment or an update, we will collect all of that information and then we will uh, keep that for those uh, later reviews. Usually it's about a um, five year period for each review cycle. And I'm, I'm sure the, uh, uh, those of you who are familiar with the, the British standards way of working. Uh, you may correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on this. Uh, it is the same with the, with the British standards as well, five years, and then you will get an update. So with the Eurocodes, uh, you may also remember that the first Eurocodes were released somewhere around 2002, 2004. And then in the case of, uh, our particular Eurocode, Eurocode 5, there was an amendment, Amendment 1, that came out in 2009. This is as a result of this feedback from users. And then in 2014, we have uh, we released the second amendment, that is the current amendment for that. This is also uh, something that we need to be aware of uh, when we are referring our uh, the institution manuals. Uh, we, you know that there is a suite of manuals uh, corresponding to each of the Eurocodes. And these were written somewhere around 2005, 2006, 2007. And again, if I take Eurocode 5 as an example, um, the Eurocode was uh, uh, released in 2004, and then we wrote the manual in 2007, and then there was an amendment in 2009, and then in 2014 as well, which means that uh, some of the information that we had in the first edition of the amendment is, is not uh, uh, fully up to date uh, as we speak today. That's why we, we managed to release our second edition or second uh, release of our Eurocode 5 manual uh, at the end of the last year. So um, I'll, I'll explain all of these uh, in, in detail later on, how, how the, uh, the industry uh, documentation 
should keep up with the, the standardization process. But uh, for the moment, we all need to know that the Eurocodes are being reviewed um, every five years or so. Then back in 2012, the, uh, there was a mandate by the, the European Commission to update the, the, the suite of Eurocodes. This is um, uh, looked at in many different angles, but I, I took um, just a couple of uh, these, uh, well, uh, three of these, uh, these ideas that we had at the time. So one of the, the key things that the the, um, the standardization committees felt at the time through various feedback processes, of course, is the ease of use. Now, um, that there are many descriptions, many angles to look at this ease of use problem, but, but uh, mostly it's about the, the, the standard itself, how it's written, the technical content, the presentation, how easy it is to flip through the pages and get to get to the information that you're looking for. These were these were real issues, and and I'm, I'm sure most of you remember our first experiences back in 2004 or 2010 when we first opened the Eurocode. We 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 had that problem. Where do I start? So these these are the problems that we were looking at when we were um, uh, looking at updating the Eurocodes. And then uh, the second one was that uh, the the harmonization aspect of the the Eurocodes. Uh, it was felt at the time that having a lot of nationally determined parameters, NDPs as we call them, were not very conducive to uh, cross-border um, uh, designs. So uh, of course, um, I'll, I'll show you in a minute that the Eurocode 5 is not much, uh, we don't have that many uh, nationally determined parameters, but for various other Eurocodes, we, we may find that there are uh, pages upon pages of NDPs or references to NDPs. Then finally, there was this discussion about the, the background information. Now, Eurocodes were totally new to us. Of course, with the British standards, we knew uh, some of these were by practice, the, the, the clauses there were by practice, the equations there were by practice, and there, there were a lot of tables to help us uh, to, to get on with our design tasks. The Eurocodes, we, 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 we did away with all these tables and we decided to go to um, really serious looking equations and formulations. When you look at some of these formulations, you think, oh, I wish I knew the background to this. And, and that's something that the, uh, the Eurocode's uh, initiative is now trying to capture. So these were the, the mandated items and there were many others as well. I'm not going to list all of them, but these were, were key to our, our efforts back in 2012. So in, in, in terms of amendments to Eurocode 5 then, uh, what were we looking at? Obviously, there were a lot of new things that we had to, to look at, new topics that we had to look at, um, because the, uh, since the, the, the first release in 2004, apart from a few amendments, we hadn't uh, incorporated new topics into the, into the uh, standard, and it's, it's now almost 15 years. So, uh, and, and, and you know how, how uh, fast the, the industry moved over the last 15 years. We had a lot of uh, you know, positive uh, uh, experiences coming from the, the industry. So we had to incorporate all of that. And not only that, we had to understand that the, the first version, although it was a massive, massive step in the right direction, it was, uh, 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 it was still open for improvements. So, so we had to look at those as well. So in, in terms of Eurocode 5 then, the, the update program is all about looking at new topics that needs to be included and also looking at how we can improve the presentation of the current technical content so that the designer can easily use that document. Then finally, for the, for the, for the day, I'll be looking at a, a program of delivery. I will, I will just uh, talk to you in, in, in very, very generic terms what happens during a, a, a standards update process. So the, the, the second um, generation of uh, Eurocodes then, uh, uh, I told you that there was, a, there was a mandate to us from the, uh, the, the European Commission. Um, there, were, there were key issues that were looked at in that mandate. The first of that was to encourage innovation. Now, it's also ensuring that the Eurocodes reflect the, the market developments. I, I, I'd like to take cross-laminated timber as, as a case in point. So um, uh, you may remember that uh, around the time, like 2008, 2009, uh, as we were about to switch on to Eurocodes, you saw the first uh, cross-laminated timber building going up in, in London, the high-rise building in London. And since then, it's just 10 years since, we know that how many 
uh, high rise buildings there were built around around the world and i'm not saying that that euro codes played a part in in, in realizing these structures but all i'm saying is that these structures are standing tall and proud there must be something uh, good with them something right with them and therefore uh, it's time for us to uh, capture that in in the euro codes and then the, there's the second one is to take into account uh, societal needs so uh, that's that's a difficult one uh, i'll i'll take vibration as an example we know that we 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 build a lot of um, four story five story uh, apartment complexes and uh, you know uh, um, uh, residential developments and and when you live you know next to each other one above you one below you and and you have foot uh, footfall vibrations coming from from the floors above you and then there, there may be situations where the um, uh, the the whirring of the 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 washing machine next door is is causing a discomfort and so on so again the the euro codes uh, did not approach these issues um um in in detail in in the first revision so so we need to now now look at all these as well and then finally there's the uh, the most important part it's to harmonize any nationally found national technical initiatives on non on new topics of interest so that we we can all benefit from that so the um, a, a, a good good uh, example is uh, the the use of screws or long screws for um, uh, reinforcing of deep members now we know that uh, in in the uk it's, it's not not that common yet but it's it's going in in the right direction as i said before but in in continental europe we, we see a lot of uh, massive structures coming up like uh, sports stadia and and such like so uh, obviously with your with your deeper beams deeper deeper columns you you may find that there is a potential for splitting uh, shrinkage or otherwise and how how could we address this and and our european colleagues as uh, continental um, colleagues have found ways of doing that using the use of screws so why don't we use uh, that in our designs as well so again a, a reason for the uh, um, for, for looking at this so the, so the summary then is that we, we we see a lot of boundaries being pushed these days so the standard need to do to catch up so the second generation of euro codes is all about that capturing the state of the art uh, in line with the technical achievements um, uh, that are presented to us so i i i told you at the beginning that um the mandate uh, um, told us about ease of use ease of use meaning how easy it is for for a first time user to look through the pages and pick up the sections or the or the clauses that needs to be followed in in, in doing a design to a euro code and then the reduction of ndts national determined parameters we we looked uh, we we discussed that but i I'm, i'm going to go into details of each one of these so if i take for example ease of use what you're seeing is is a presentation uh, of a connection design uh, process that um, uh, myself and and a few of my colleagues from uh, continental europe presented in in uh, in in germany a couple of years back what we are trying to show here is that if you are trying to do a simple screw design i'm i'm sure uh, some of your screens may not show you the the finer details of this uh, this slide but uh, the coloration and the various arrows running here there and everywhere is is trying to tell you that in trying to do a design for screw connections you had to jump through pages upon pages back and forth several times before you get to the answer that you're looking for and i believe and and most of us in the in the standardization committees and and that community believe that that is not the right way of um, you know presenting the information presenting the technical content to to our readership so this is the the ease of use problem in in one one um, way of looking at it so there may be others second one of course is the the reduction of ndps the national determined parameters now what you're looking on your looking at on your screen is the entirety of the ndps allowed within euro code 5 the entirety of that so i think um, i i may have your agreement on this that it's not much it's it's not much at all but there are other standards where there are pages upon pages of such references but of course when you look at this um 
uh, those of you who are familiar with the the current standard if you look at the the references to section 99241 and 9253 these are these are cumbersome sections so in in presenting those ideas national determinant parameters in our national annex the uk national annex we spent pages upon pages um i'll i'll come back to this later on as well but uh, but uh, but notwithstanding that our number of ndps are limited so in our effort to improve eurocode 5 we are not uh, currently looking at this as a as a serious issue of course we are looking at the the ease of use as a serious issue but not this one okay so i'll i'll skip uh, to the next one then that's about background information so i, I very briefly presented to you the idea of um, the technical content in eurocodes being quite drastically different from the way we presented the information in uh, in in british standards now this one what you're looking at is 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 a simple situation of a beam being notched uh, on the underside meaning the the support side and therefore there's a potential for this beam to split and therefore we need to reduce the shear strength capability of this beam and in doing that we need to calculate let's say a notch factor kv that's what you're seeing on the right hand side and um i'm 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 sure if i if i was doing this in the in the, in the, in, the, in a live audience i mean, if i ask you to uh, you know raise your hands to say that this is a cumbersome looking equation all of you would say that unless it's uh, uh, um um option b which gives you the uh, the option of kv equals 1 then it's a difficult one to calculate but but not necessarily so if we if we go to the the background document for this this particular example and if you look through the the numbers and if you try to understand then you you know why it has to be like that not only that you you will easily see some ways of simplifying that so um so i think presenting the background information um, where these equations where these formulations where these diagrams came from of obviously this came from um, scientific presentations scientific uh, discussions in in various forums so if we give them uh, give the the uh, the users the eurocode users the references to these materials then uh, i think you will agree with me that uh, that's uh, a nice way of doing it so so in summary then um, in 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 trying to do these things the uh, the important aspects that we looked at were the ease of use the reduction of national determinant parameters not so much but uh, then of course the background documents so what are the specific amendments that uh, were being looked at for or that are being looked at for 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 eurocode 5 so um, broad categorization between new topics and improvements to current topics simple as that so what would the new topics be um for example cross laminated timber if you were to flip through the pages of 2014 amended version of eurocode 5 you will not see um any reference to cross laminated timber which became a, a popular material of uh, choice uh, afterwards so uh, cross laminated timber is a good example and then uh, what about the uh, the improvements to current content um, i i can i can tell you of 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 story um we were part of um, myself and, and and a few other colleagues we were part of a coast action um, on timber this is a, a, a you know a gathering of uh, european researchers to to try and summarize the the current uh, state of the art in terms of timber design so this particular coast action coast action 1402 we 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 were in various working groups looking at various ideas and i was part of connections and 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 uh, most of the um, the audience or most of these researchers felt that connections was the most difficult aspect of of team ban and, and and there's no secret to that so so we felt that we should do a a europe wide survey and and find out how how the the actual end user feels about this so we sent out a very um, um, simple survey asking uh, people to give us feedback on technical content um, and also how the the technical content is presented in in the in the in the document so we we addressed practitioners uh, contractors academics researchers we uh, students even so we approached all of them there were there were several themes to the feedback that we received 
that uh, the the underlying comment underlying uh, highlighted feedback was that the the technical content was all right to 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 uh, the most uh, most of it is okay but uh, but the, the the reliability of the information uh, and also the uh, the presentation of information within the pages was not that very helpful and also there were a couple of other comments about uh, the um, uh, about eurocode 5 relying upon various other standards that uh, you don't seem to think that you need uh, at the time of opening eurocode 5 so that was also another comment but but the underlying theme as i said it's not about the technical content it's the presentation of the technical content so so we had to improve the current content so how did we or how do we go about doing this um obviously this uh, updating process takes time takes effort and takes uh, um financial um, sacrifices the european commission uh, european union was uh, was putting a lot of money into this and therefore we had to um you know phase out the um, the, the program so the first phase uh, you're looking at a screen which uh, details the project teams so project team uh, t1 and t2 that was the first phase and we were looking at cross laminated timber and screw reinforcements on on that part and then in t2 we were looking at timber concrete composites these are all new topics and then in the second phase we were looking at t3 which is cluster eurocode 5 which is an ongoing project even today a cluster eurocode is is another way of saying everything other than fire connection and connections and bridges so this this covers things like vibrations and uh, racking of wall panels and and such like so so within that uh, project team t3 then there could be new ideas new topics to be covered as well as improvements to be had and then the project team uh, teams 4 5 and 6 uh, these were the last to be commissioned this was the third phase this we, we started work in in 2018 and i'm part of this t5 the connections uh, working uh, sorry uh, the project team so what were the things that we were were looking at so i'm i'm going to um, run through a, a a number of slides now so the first one is about uh, timber comp- uh, sorry cross laminated timber cross laminated timber so it's a new topic topic now of course um currently the practice is um I, i'm not sure how many of you are familiar with cross laminated timber uh, the current practice is uh, you use a little bit of the annex b from eurocode 5 you use uh, quite a lot of technical information coming through uh, the, from the various manufacturers and then you look at uh, some centers of excellence software and 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 uh, and, and there are some good publications as well so all of those um, help you but it's not a harmonized way of designing things uh, uh, not only that this particular material is not produced in a harmonized way yet uh, i'll i'll explain that because these are currently produced under a uh, european technical guidance or european technical technical approval and therefore the various manufacturers produce their uh, their own cross laminated timber according to their own Uh, european technical approval these are these are valid approvals um, but there may be slight differences to the products so when you're doing designs you know you need to uh, go to the individual um, supplier or the, or the manufacturer and, and engage with them at a design level before you can specify the product of course you can download the the the, the product brochures etc then then you can decide the, uh, you know just a bold park area where you're standing but at the, at the at the very end of the design process before you commission the the fabrication process you you need to involve with the with the manufacturers so uh, this particular exercise uh, of writing the the design rules for the for, for cross laminated timber ran alongside uh, a development of a harmonized um, product standard for this this particular material um, this this work has uh, now been finished in in terms of writing the technical content but uh, as i will show you in a, in a, in a few slides uh, into the into the presentation uh, towards the end i will show you that uh, the the end of writing the uh, the technical content is is not the end of the the exercise there's there's a there's a um a, a approvals process that needs to to happen before 
it can reach us as a as a technical document that we can use for our designs. So anyway, the the actual uh, content of this um, this exercise, the the technical uh, the, the the production of technical content, is about definition and specifications. This is where the harmonization came about. So we had to work with the uh, with the uh, the product standards. And then uh, we had to come up with uh, uh, standardized values for or generic values for material characteristics. And then, of course, the parameters for design, things like uh, the modification factors. And then finally, the design rules, how you can design for um, the ultimate limit state and the, the, the serviceability limit state. All of that will be included into your code 5 in some uh, way, shape or form. Um, when I say that, you, you know what I mean. The, the material specifications can go into the materials section of Eurocode 5, and uh, the, uh, the design rules, the ultimate limit states can go to the ultimate design uh, limit state design rules section of Eurocode 5, and, and so on and so forth. So this will be incorporated into Eurocode 5 in, in times to come. So the next one is about screw reinforcements. I told you the uh, the need for this. Uh, I, I, I don't think I need to repeat myself here. Uh, but then again, the material characteristics, parameters for design, design rules. And of course, when you do this, you, you have the option of gluing these screws uh, as, you, as you insert them. And these all need to be looked at. Again, this will be incorporated into the into Eurocode 5 um, where appropriate. That's That's at least the current current idea. I will explain why I say that. Then the next one is the, the timber concrete composites. Again, a new topic, but there were a lot of researchers, even from the UK, uh, who were heavily involved in this, this process. So uh, again, uh, this work has now been finished. But, um, but this is something that uh, the, the standardization committees felt that that needs to go out as soon as possible. So we uh, we may decide to go down a different route to release this. So you may see that in, in your slide, it's uh, at the very bottom, I'm saying that this uh, could be included as a technical specification, which can, which can uh, you know, expedite the process of approvals at the end of the back end of um, technical content delivery. But for the moment, we now have the definitions and specifications, and we have harmonized that with other standards like concrete, for example. And we have the material characteristics, the structural analysis processes, parameters for design, design rules, and also the time-dependent behavior. Um, that, by that, I mean the creep behavior of these, and also the connection behaviors as well. Um, having said that, uh, uh, for all these new topics, I'm, I'm, I'm not um, the, the expert, or I wasn't part of these expert panels who wrote these sections. So I, I, I know about the processes involved and I know where they are, but uh, some of the technical content um, can be, can be um, um, I, I haven't, uh, haven't reviewed them, them yet. So um, what are the other things? Uh, so this is a common question that we receive uh, on, the, on the TARD advisory line. Um, what do I do if I have to uh, drill a hole? Oh, um, uh, uh, and even, even more uh, commonly is a question of, oh, I've done this inspection on a, on a building where I see a, a great big uh, hole being punched into the, into the, into the joist, what, what can I do? So the, the limits for uh, notches and circular holes and, and, and such like, we have a little bit of information, um, um, you know, after the, the European, uh, sorry, the, the German standards, we included some of that into our um, the published document PD6693, as you can see on the, on the top right of your screen. Not only that, um, uh, TARD had some publications, the, uh, the, the, the particular one being uh, timber frame constructions, where we had some guidance on the, uh, the, the limits for these notches and the, and the places where they are allowed and, and, and such like. But um, these are all coming from uh, 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 not from a harmonized way of uh, uh, doing things. So, so we are now looking at how we can include this into a, um, a next version of Eurocode. So we are looking at a rectangular and circular um, holes, and we are looking at maximum dimensions, and we are, we are also looking at how can I uh, verify the stresses developed in, in, in such, um, such members. 
this will also go into the the cluster part of Eurocode 5, which is the uh, all the other sections apart from connections, fire, and and bridges. So um, that's that on holes. And of course, uh, the next one is uh, foundation piles. This is a this is a, a quite a um, uh, niche area. Uh, but before I go there, I, I, I should explain my slide here a little bit, which I forgot to do. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, on the title, it says Eurocode five new topics, and then it says foundation piles, and it says SC five T three. Obviously, that means that that is the the, uh, the project team that is handling this this particular topic. So this uh, this one in, in in particular the the the, the piles this is a requirement from uh, mainly from our Dutch colleagues uh, where they have uh, hundreds upon uh, hundreds if not thousands of of piles supporting their buildings and they need a way of uh, analyzing these structures. Of course, we can currently uh, you know uh, put these structures down to service class three, but it's not real service class three and and there's a there's a big Conversation we are having in in the European um, standardization circles about what is to do with this um, service class problem. And in service class problems, I think the direction we are heading is that we will be defining a service class four. And I think the the groundwork has already been done for that. So again, this is work in progress. Um, I will not read out the slide for you. We will come up with design rules and, and of course of connections and durability and all such things. So again, will be included into Eurocode 5. Then uh, something that we uh, seem to use quite regularly these days, especially in refurbishment works, glued in rods or bonded in rods, if, um, if I use the correct word for that. Uh, again, there were a lot of attempts previously. Uh, I can remember two cost actions previously. One was headed by um, uh, one of our own um, members from the ISTAC team, Professor Richard Harris from from Bath University is now retired. Um, we we did all these exercises long before that. We um, Prada took the initiative to publish some guidelines on that again as part of another cost action. But even though we had this information available to us, there wasn't an opportunity for us to write this into the Eurocode five, and we believe that it is now time to do that. Again, uh, the current idea is to include this topic into the main body of Eurocode five. But depending on the demand and depending on our conversations and how conversations and how we progress with this this uh, document, we may decide to come up with the technical specification instead. So again, I'm not going into the detailed parts of this. This is too much uh, for an evening session like this. So um, then there is the, uh, the 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 glued in rods, uh, and then sorry, um, the brittle failure of connections. This is something that um, that uh, my project team is is currently looking at. Of course, uh, you may you may remember that um, there was this Annex A in the in 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 the current version of Eurocode five, which kind of looks at this. But we we believe that that's not a complete picture. So in our attempts, we will be looking at uh, splitting, and then we will be looking at row shear, block shear, and net tensile failure as possible failure modes. The, qu the question asked is, if you do a design or if, if you do a connection calculation to uh, the current section eight of Eurocode five, do you really have to worry about the uh, the shear failure modes or the brittle failure modes? And our, our uh, national annex uh, seems to believe that that unless we have a certain number of uh, fastness, we don't need to do certain calculations, and that's the the attitude. Um, I think our our approach in in this current attempt is to is to make sure that you you achieve elasticity, achieve achieve ductility within the within the first part of your calculation, but then also to give you some, uh, uh, you know, um, really simple solutions that you can test against, uh, so that you, you you don't get little failure in your connections. So again, to be included into Eurocode five. Then there's the the question of carpentry connections. I have to, I have to I have to clarify here. When I say carpentry connections, this is not about the actual, the oak construction in total. This is about using carpentry type joints in modern timber constructions. And in, in, in trying to do that, we, we have some work in progress to look at some common connection typologies. Uh, I've taken two here, step and downhill connections, and there are others to be included as well. There's good progress being made here. 
we have uh, a number of countries including the uk who have uh, contributed to the this this particular part of the standard so so we are making very good progress on that again um when 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 when, when the time is right we will include this in the euro code 5 so i i showed you then the uh, the, the topics that we will be looking at for um and uh, the the new topics but what are the improvements that that we are looking at so the first improvement that i'm trying to show you here again i i um, i i'm sure that you you may not see the detail of this but there was a corresponding figure uh, that i showed you at the in the in the, in the original part of uh, the first part of my presentation the ease of use this is a connection and again this is our proposal on how the connections chapter should be organized so that the designer going to do a screw connection is not jumping around the document rather there's a linear flow to your your character. of course there will be some uh, some areas where we can't achieve 100% linearity but we will we will work on that so this is only one way of looking at ease of use there are other things for example referring to other standards can we can we incorporate some of the uh, the material values for example into the into the design standard euro code 5 so that people do not have to go to material standards to find the values so these are things that we will be looking at so um, another topic that is uh, quite um, uh, some of you who are uh, working with uh, timber frame constructions you're, you're familiar with this and also with uh, the cross laminated timber you're familiar with this the limits for uh, the compression perpendicular to grain and, and and you know that uh, when it goes to about five stories six stories in in normal um, stick buildings um, traditional timber frame constructions some of your bottom rails and um, you know um, these things will get uh, crushing failures of course not that they're physically getting crushed but uh, but the but the technical document says says that it is um, behaving like that now there were lots of um, arguments we are having or discussions we are having in in european standardization circles in, the, in, in on, on this um currently we are we are we are we are, we are thinking that we should go back to um, the level of detail that we presented back in 2004 some of the the, the keen eyed um, you know designers amongst us may have noticed that in 2004 we had these details that you're seeing uh, in front of you in the design standard but then they somehow disappeared in the 2009 edition of our Euro code 5 we think that that is important to bring it back and then uh, then find out how we can incorporate this into our designs again um, a lot of discussions to be had around this topic but i'll i'll leave it at that and then we can uh, come back and discuss if ne if necessary then comes the 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 most difficult question of all how do we uh, analyze or design a wall diaphragm Obviously, you know the story about method A. The, Euro, uh, the, the continental European method of construction requires a certain way of doing things, and our construction uh, methods in the UK requires a certain other method of doing things. So, obviously, at the time of the first edition of Euro Code 5 in 2004, we had two methods, methods A and B. And then by, by the time we, we produced our UK National Annex, we found that method B, uh, which was supposed to be our own method for uh, you know, gold diaphragms um, wasn't producing uh, really good results. So we, we said, now, oh, by the way, let's look at that in, in, in detail separately. So the UK National Annex, as you can see on your screen, is saying that uh, don't rely on method B. We will give you some other method in, uh, in a PD. The PD6693 is, uh, is now the current method to do that. And, um, and that's, that's okay. Uh, currently, that's the, that's the, uh, the method to, to follow. But again, uh, at TRADA, for example, at the, the, the TRADA advisory line, we get questions about this quite a lot, really, that, uh, that most of our designers, most of our colleagues in the industry, they're, they're struggling to, um, to, to justify or, or, or compare the, the results coming out of the PD method to that of our old uh, BS5268 6.1 and 6.2 methods. So again, uh, we, we need to modify that. And in doing that, we need to be aware of that uh, nationally determined parameters problem. The European standardization circles, the European uh, Union Commission, uh, the mandate, and therefore the, the particular SEN committee that's looking after our Eurocode 5 is not very keen on having various different methods. 
Of course, we know that there is a difference between the construction methods and therefore we need to capture that information. So there is good effort being made on this. Um, another one of our UK colleagues is, is, is doing his work on this um, and, and therefore we are, we are expecting this to, to come out um, uh, uh, you know, very soon as part of um, Eurocode 5. Again, work, work in progress. Next topic is, is about vibrations. Again, there were a lot of lot of problems. I told you about the the, the, the multi-story buildings and the, and the problems with vibration issues. Um, without going into much details, I, I, I can say that um, a, a good team of um, a good project team, really learned and really experienced project team, has made good progress on this this aspect. Um, and they've they've really really um, identified the shortcomings in the current approach, and therefore the improvements are based on. Um, a performance levels, for example, so that, so that you can you can categorize the various performance levels expected, and they have also included uh, new flow types, the, the screed flows, and all that, um, and also the, the mass timber constructions. So uh, quite good progress made there. Um, obviously, I can't I can't give you much much details on any of these because they have not gone through the uh, the actual formal voting process. So uh, to Three slides more, I think. The um, the fire section, I, I have to be very light on this because uh, there are a lot of um, you know heated debate uh, currently in in, in progress uh, in in the UK particularly. Uh, so so I, I'll, I'll I'll keep it very simple. The uh, the fire standard is is currently being revised in its entirety. So it's a work in progress, making good progress. Um, there's uh, there's an idea that it, it will go into tabulated design data as well. So for simpler designs, you can you can look up a table and get some values out of it. That's kind of the approach taken. Whether we will have enough tabulated data to present in the standard, we don't know yet. But then there will be simplified design rules, and then there will be advanced design rules as well. So the uh, the the idea is that when you when you touch on the advanced design rules, then you you could be doing multi-story buildings and, and, and things like that. So um, I was participating in, this, in these discussions for about three years and uh, since about 2016, I haven't been part of these discussions. Instead, um, one of my colleagues from the Structural Timber Association is, is going to these, uh, these discussions now. So if, if you need any, any further information on, on where the fire standard is heading, please get in touch with us and we will um, we will we will uh, discuss those with you, and of course uh, don't forget that there's a there is a government consultation currently going on about uh, timber constructions, and I'm, I'm I'm not taking sides here, but I'm sure you can uh, you can feel my my bias. So if you feel like uh, submitting any any uh, documents to that, please feel free to do so as well. And then the the connection geometry. Uh, this is again something that uh, that we we looked at in our uh, uh, standard the connections chapter and and we thought right you're looking at the uh, uh, the spacing rules for example for spacing rules for for nails and those of you who remember the the British standard way of saying things we had simple values like three times the five times the seven times the ten times the that's all about it whereas the Eurocode five has gone into the real real detail of the angles the the densities and so on. And we were thinking, can we not improve this? And one of our colleagues from the uh, the Dutch, uh, um, sorry, the the, uh, the Netherlands, um, came up with this simple idea of um, of the of the graph that's shown onto your right. So these are some of the simplifications that that we are thinking of in uh, in 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 in, uh, in times. So connection geometry is that. And then there is the. Uh, the final one, which is the, uh, the simplification of the Johansson model or the European yield model, which is a work in progress. It is a really, really difficult task. And we are, we are having really lively discussions, lively arguments about this, how to simplify this. And, and again, uh, when we say simplification, what do you really mean by simplification? This, this uh, set of equations is, is just part of the whole design process, but I'm just showing this as an example. Um, if some of you have already started putting this into your software or your spreadsheets, 
then you don't you don't worry too much about the simplicity of these equations. Of course, uh, it's not uh, uh, um, looking nice here, but once you've incorporated that into the spreadsheet, that's not that bad. But then again, um, can we can we put this into a tabulated format or, or some description? Of course, we have the history of um, using these, uh, these equations in the 2007 ed edition of our British Standard as tabulated format. So, so we could be looking at these as well. Anyway, it's a difficult one, but uh, we are making uh, good progress on that one as well. So um, finally, then um, I have to uh, talk about the the program delivery here. Um, I, I don't uh, expect you to see the, the the actual lettering of this this slide, uh, which is uh, quite small. I, I, I agree. I apologize for that. But if you look at the, the left-hand box, which is the red box there, the PT drafting or the project team drafting happens at that end. So we are in that process. And that process alone takes about two years. And then if you uh, include to that all the blue boxes appearing in between, the black ones, the, the yellow ones, and the purple ones, you're looking at a really long period of time. I'm not criticizing this process. This needs to happen. European standardization is, is a product of many different com countries coming together, and there were protocols and there were uh, agreed, uh, you know, ideas at the, at the time of establishment that documents will be published in in French and in, in German. So, so these need to be translated, and translation takes time. These are technical documents. So, so. When we produce the, the technical content at the end of a, a PT drafting process, that doesn't mean that that will come to you as a standard in two months time. It will take some time. And then if, when, if, if you look at to, to, the, to the green boxes to your right, that's when we are supposed to start producing the industry guidance materials. And I'm, I'm going back to the, the ISTRUCT or, or the TRADA guidance documents or the ISTRUCT manual which is a trial I struck the um, joint effort. That's when we should be doing that. That will be about, you know, I don't know how many years, maybe three, four years down the line since the, the end of the, the technical content production. So, so there is a, a, a long period for that. So all these, um, these amendments, these new topics that I told you about, they will not appear as standardized uh, uh, standards format um, for the next five, six years. So what are we looking at? We are currently looking at this timeline. Once again, I have to clarify that this is about the, um, the production of technical content. So the, the uh, project team one and project team two have, uh, have finished their, their work and they have submitted their drafts. And they have now gone for formal voting. And then they are now making progress along that long line of processes. The, the second phase, which was the project team T3, the cluster Eurocode started slightly earlier to us and they're making good progress. And uh, that and the project teams T, uh, T, um, project team four, five, and six, we are all supposed to submit our uh, second drafts at the end of this month. And then uh, the, the final drafts at the end of this year. And then we expect all of these to uh, finish by around 2023. So that's a summary of what we um, what we are looking at. It's about 50 minutes into our presentation. I'm, I'm sorry I kept you uh, going for, for for such a long time, but I think um, I will now open the floor to discussions. Um, so Kirthi, if you're ready, we'll go on with the first one. It's coming from uh, Zuzana. Right. Uh, she says, what would, uh, what would your response be to the current UK government's consultation on banning all combustible materials on buildings over 11 metres in height, not distinguishing, uh, distinguishing between cladding and primary structure? Um, thank you very much, uh, Susanna. That's a, that's a very pertinent question. Uh, I have to apologize, um, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not an expert on, on fire design of structures. And, and I know that the, the institution has a number of uh, fire related uh, presentations lined up as well as previous presentations that I part took part in as well as, as, a, as an audience member. 
Now, um, with that, I, I, of course, I'm, I'm uh, entitled to my own opinion, and I think, um, I think we, we should not be, um, you know, uh, uh, frightened about um, saying our opinion. The, the government is asking for our opinion anyway. Uh, the, the structure and cladding has to, has to clearly be differentiated, and and the, and and we have really good, robust methods of constructing the structure, and and we have done that over many years. And and the Eurocode five, the, the the fire part of the Eurocode five is being improved massively by our our researching colleagues on that. So um, I, I feel really um, uh, uh, sad that that we 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 don't seem to be. Uh, differentiating between the two, uh, the, the cladding and the primary primary structure. That's my personal opinion, and of course, um, uh, I represent Trada as well. Trada will have their own uh, say on this uh, during the consultation period. The the, uh, the Structural Timber Association will also have their own opinion. Um, uh, of course, I have seen many architects and many many engineers. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see how um, how things pan out. I hope that that's that's good enough for the moment. Um, okay, and uh, if I go to Lloyd's question, then is yep. CLT not more important to get out quickly than timber concrete composites? Is there any reason why CLT design isn't being considered for release as a technical specification? Uh, another good question, uh, Lloyd. This is uh, this is something that we considered at the time. The the uh, there are two things that we have to be very aware of. Is that um, once we have finished the the technical specification writing for the um, sorry the technical writing of the the CLT part, we had to then um, then harmonize that with the product standard. So it's a question of how far we can um, go with that process, which is handled by an, an entirely different body of people. So uh, so we I, I I believe that we, we we felt at the time that there was no way that we could uh, harmonize that that level of detail. That we can bring out the, uh, the technical specification in, in a timely manner. Not only that, CLT in comparison to tech, uh, timber concrete composites um, has a lot of commonality between other parts of the Eurocode which are being updated. So it's it's it's, uh, it's it's it was considered at the time that we should be just um, updating them all together. So I think uh, that is the answer. <laughs> Thank you, Kirthi. Uh We'll go on to the next one from, uh, I'm, I may pronounce this wrong, uh, Yasonas. I hope I got that right. right. Um, so thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Um, we've had a few messages say, say that as well. Um, so the, the changes you. seem very promising and including information for CLT and improving use of EC5 would be most welcome. Uh, he's personally working on fire design of timber is keen to conduct research on AI and fire design of timber. So you touched mm -hmm. on fire before and about not being the expert in that. Um, but do you foresee potential application of artificial intelligence in development of EC5-1-2? Uh, is there a specific committee that they could speak to to get some direction on this? Where can, um, where, 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 where can we point them to? Yes, I think in, in, in the first instance, if you were to write to Michael, please, and then, then Michael can pass that information back to me. I'll put you in touch with uh, with some of my colleagues from across Europe who are doing um, really cutting edge um, uh, research on 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 fire design, and they'll be quite keen to hear from you. So to okay follow up on that, yeah, absolutely. Um, so for any questions like that, if you feel free to email uh, events at istructi.org, and we'll be able to pass them on to the relevant people to uh, to help you progress with this. So that that will go for a couple of questions that might come up. Um, as we go on, I've uh, got another one here from Kirsten. Um, she has asked, uh, in this process of European standardization, how could UK interests be addressed, especially during this climate of the UK leaving the European Union? <laughs> That's very interesting. Now, um, n number of things here. Uh, we are leaving the European Union, of course. That's happened. That's, uh, that's now... Uh, um, Guaranteed, but um, uh, even before that, we had these conversations with our European colleagues, and of course at government levels as well, we had these conversations about um, continuing with the uh, the exchange of technical information. So, I believe the BSI has signed up to continuing this process, and therefore, um, therefore we will we will continue to 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 continue to uh, engage with these um, committees and 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 uh, project teams and working groups. Not only that. 
I think uh, some of the experts on on these uh, these uh, project teams they are from from the UK as well, so they will continue to to contribute anyway. Uh, some of the the big engineering practices in in in, in the UK they are contributing out of their own goodwill to these projects, and therefore these will continue as well. So um, our interests are represented in in many different ways. There are a number of uh, institution members who are uh, also members of these. Uh, the European committees, including myself, and there are uh, representations from Trada. There are representations from the the Structural Timber Association, and there are uh, representations from various industry bodies. Like um, I don't want to mention all of them, but but um, uh, a, a good contingent of uh, Europe, uh, you know, UK representat uh, representatives are, are taking part in these uh, European discussions. So our interests will be will be addressed and and, and looked at. I hope. Cool. Uh, I've got a kind of follow-up question, I guess, uh, from uh, around the whole Brexit and the European Union from Ralph. And I have to read this because I missed off Ralph's question at the last lecture that we had. Um, mm -hmm. says, um, will Eurocode eventually be abandoned or, or just simply replaced? Um, national domestic construction sector still mainly relies on British standards, uh, even CP design guides and so on. So d do you mm -hmm. think there would be some kind of abandonment of of Eurocodes eventually. Well, um, I wish I could. I, I wish I could answer that question. But, but uh, uh, Ralph, I think uh, the the answer is I don't know. But I can only tell you my my personal opinion. The the personal opinion is that uh, the the Eurocodes community, for particularly for Eurocode five, is is a genuinely good group of people. We are we are a very small community. About um, I would say less than 100 active researchers uh, around Europe. If I if I do not count the the PhD students, uh, therefore um, we, we have a good rapport and we we, have, we we listen to each other and we we do uh, quite good work on that. And I hope that that we can continue these exercises um, and, and benefit from each other's knowledge. Okay, hopefully that's uh, it's quite a tricky one to answer, but. Uh... <laughs> uh, okay, the, the, the big answer is who knows we'll have to wait and see who knows, that yes. who knows um right we'll get a couple more questions and then we will let everyone go back to um back to i guess it's dinner time for most people um so one from jack here got the issue of tracking back and forth between clauses is an issue with other euro codes besides timber do you know if any amendments or updates are forthcoming to tackle this issue for steel concrete or composite members um, are you are, are you aware that, of any any of the conversations happening? Y yes, yes. Some of our colleagues have been uh, discussing about this in in other other uh, European committees as well. Uh, the the guidance came from the the highest level, that is the technical committee 250, which is headed by one of our members, one of our UK members, Professor Steve Denton. The the guidance to to uh, to make the the standards easy to use came from that level. And it filtered down to, to timber, the steel and the concrete and the aluminiums, all of these other standards. So I hope and, and I, I pray that, that they will uh, um, take the message on and they will um, continue to improve on this uh, this really disturbing. Uh, uh, I agree with uh, Jack wholeheartedly on this. Uh, tracking back and forth is, is not a very conducive way of doing um, designs which are you know uh, paid for by other people. Okay. Uh, we'll maybe have three or four more questions. We'll try and get through. Um, we'll try and go to a maximum quarter past seven. We'll get through as many as we can. Um, Graham has asked, since the process is going to take a few years before the update is available, how should we deal with critical areas such as fire design in the interim? It's another fire question. Yeah, I, 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 I agree again with Graham. So how, how do we deal with this? Um, the current Eurocode 5 is, is, is a good starting point. And I, I would say that uh, once you get really into the into the integrity of the calculations, you will end up with certain big questions uh, being being thrown at you, and that's when you need to start looking up uh, the the current um, you know research output. So I can I can recommend a few um, a few uh, research forums. For example, uh, the uh, the formerly known as CIBW18, now it's known as INTER, International Network of Timber Engineering Researchers. So um, they publish all their papers online and they're free to download. You could uh, look them up. Um, and then um, most of these, um, uh, you know, the fire design um, centers of excellence, uh, there's one in uh, Sweden, there's one in um, Switzerland, 
and of course we have our very own uh, Edinburgh um, or Sheffield and of course a, a few in London as well all of them produce their papers and they 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 they, uh, they release them for for free use um trada has been uh, trying to highlight some of these documents as well so my 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 answer to that is um, in the interim we will make a start based on the current eurocode 5 and then we will look for uh, advanced information in the in the research output Okay, uh, we've had two very similar questions come in, so we'll, we'll kind of roll them into one. Uh, one from Lloyd and one from Hannah, who are pretty much asking the same question. Uh, we'll try and roll it into one of um, one of your slides. I think uh, is mentioned maybe slide twenty six or twenty seven. Uh, your drafting finishing uh, in twenty twenty three doesn't mean that we will have new standard in twenty twenty three. Are you aware of the timescales of when the new one will be released? Um. Again, the answer is I don't know exactly. Um, the, this is taken at a, at a at a level above us. The the decisions, uh, of course, they have to go through a lot of a um, lot of harmonisation uh, exercises before uh, things can be done. And given the current climate, again, um, I'm not sure how fast these um, these phases are moving. Of course, there were two phases before us. Our, our phase is phase three. The the, the, the project teams four, five, and six. We are just about finishing our technical technical work, so we are hoping that um, uh, us being the back end of this technical content production, we we should see some uh, something coming out towards the the end of 2023, I would think. But that is still a guess. Okay, so watch this space. <laughs> we've got we've got a few <laughs> years to get it right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, and a quest, quick question from Antonia: uh, Will the background information be referenced as NCCIs? Um, again, a uh, very good question, and Antonia. That I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to be made available to yourselves, but um, we are being asked to produce these background documents as you would do a normal standard. So, for example, if you are referring to uh, clause number 7.2.2 of of um, Eurocode 5, then the the background document will also have a clause number 7.2.2, which will explain the details behind that particular clause. So, um, and, and therefore, and I believe therefore, the idea is for both these documents to be made available to yourselves, or at least to the national standardization bodies. Okay, uh, we've got two more questions, I think, uh, and then we will be done. Uh, the, the penultimate one, it comes from Steve. Uh, it says, contrary to most other Euro codes, EC5 includes diagrams of standard details. Some see these are deterring innovation and more appropriate for textbooks or design guides. Uh, are there any plans to remove these from EC5, uh, in particular the bridge part, in future publications or future updates? Um, I, I think again, Steve, that's a good question. Um, the the bridges part has um, has not been updated through those um, cycles that I was talking to you about previously. But there is a genuine effort this time around to to make uh, you know include a lot of lot of uh, good information into that. Uh, things like fatigue, for example, will be included into the the bridges part this time around. Um, speaking about the um, the diagrams, I think I, I kind of um, guess what what you're what you're trying to get at. Um, I I've, I've struggled with that as well, but um, uh, some of these diagrams will be taken out for sure because the 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 entirety of the that bridges part is is being revised. So um, I, I, again, I I have to say what's this space. I'm I'm not sure whether uh, there'll be a, a clear a break from the previous one. But uh, certainly, a um, lot of effort is being put into that part. Okay, and then we'll finish up with the final one. Um, no name on this one, so we'll call them RH, as the initials have given. Uh, it says, thanks for the presentation. Will there be any further guidelines on reinforced glue lamb structures, either with FRP sheeting or steel reinforcing bars? Um, I, I think the... Uh, the idea of the uh, the bonded in rods or, or the the, um, the glued in rods, as they are commonly known, um, is to include um, a lot of this information. And I, as I said during my presentation, we were we were uh, we, we are considering whether to bring this out as a as a as a technical uh, specification um, as as a standalone document. And uh, currently, we are looking at all the materials, um, including glue lamb and CLT, uh, as part of this process. So. 
so I, I think yes, uh, they will be included into the into the document in, in times to come.